we, we all know banks are very, very powerful with access to resources, etc. They're not going to go down uh, very easily. So how, uh, what will happen in, uh, to banks in the next five to ten years? Because they're going to fight it, aren't they? Sure, um, although you've got to realize that banks are not made of evil people, right? <laughs> I mean, you, you have a few people who have this caricature of you. These are institutional structures that have a certain amount of inertia, where you can have 10,000 good people and maybe one sociopath CEO sometimes, but mostly 10,000 good people all working, paying their mortgages, feeding their family, etc., making minute decisions every day that add up to a giant evil empire. <laughs> that racially profiles homeowners and illegally forecloses on them and takes enormous risks with the knowledge that the regulators will back them up and bail them out if they fail so they can privatize all the profits and socialize all the losses and put it all on the taxpayer and rob pensioners. It's pretty evil stuff, but it's not done by evil people, it's done by good people. And that, that institutional inertia also means that when faced with an existential crisis, these organizations are very, very slow to respond. Um, they're unable to quickly shift direction because the very architecture of that business model is embedded into the organization so deeply, and the assumptions are so deeply embedded in the culture that it's almost impossible to change. Which means they will be badly affected by this, just like the newspapers and the media industry and the TV industry and the movie industry. I go to uh, conferences with bankers, and they ask me, should we get a blockchain consultant? And I said, no. Get a former newspaper editor who got fired because the internet ate his business or her business, and ask them, when did you first know the internet was about to eat your industry? What did you do to prevent software from eating your industry? Now that you know that you failed, what would you do differently? And tell us, please, because software is coming to eat our industry for the first time in a hundred years. It's going to be difficult, but in the end, the banks will still be here. They'll just be very different. They'll have less power. They'll offer services that have to be there. Fractional lending is something the blockchains don't do at the moment, can't do at the moment, by design. That's okay. Maybe that's a purpose for banks. There are a lot of things that banks can do as interpersonal relationships with their depositors. They call that a lost business right now, because it's not as profitable as engineering financial instruments to underwrite a loan for a war dictator or something like that. But maybe they can reform their operations and focus back on customer service. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Do you know why? Because in the end, this isn't about any established industry. There is no right to maintain a business model. There is no guarantee to profits. And if banks are terrified of competition in a free market, something seriously wrong has happened to banking. If the most terrifying thing in the world is unbridled capitalism, and you work at a bank, and that's what scares you. I was on a panel where one of the bankers said, we don't have to do anything. The government won't allow this to happen. <laughs> if your last resort is a government decree that prevents competition in the free market, and you're a banker, you have already lost. Banks will do fine, as long as their model is in building productive relationships that serve the community and society. If what they're doing is vampire squid financing of, of war dealers and dictators around the world, they will fail. Good. Good riddance. So I'm not really concerned. In the end, when the dinosaurs ignored the mammals, and they looked at that bright, shiny thing in the sky that was coming for them, a lot of them probably wondered, what's going to happen to the dinosaurs? They're still here. I had one of their eggs for breakfast. Dinosaurs turned into chickens. They are the closest descendant of those once mighty beasts. And we are the descendants of the furry things they crushed underfoot. Let history repeat. I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you.